right. Hey, Float Magic fans, it's Shawnee coming to you from the Salt Cave. I've got some special guests here with me today. I'm kind of excited because you guys are rarely through this area. <laughs> so to grab them and get in on a podcast, this is Josh and Hank from Sixes. Sixes is a paint shop over in Pocatello. Um, tell us a little bit about Sixes. So that was like <laughs> the whole concept for Sixes was basically just a, a spot for artists to go. Um, growing up. Both him and I actually grew up doing graffiti together. Like, I think that's actually probably how we met in the grapevine. Yeah. And his brother. But, uh, yeah, so six is, is kind of loose code speak for going to paint trains. If you're playing uh, dice games, if you roll a pair of sixes, um, oftentimes that's called boxcars or midnight. And so that was like a good code speak way. But then also growing up in the hardcore music scene, um, they use like the phonetic alphabet for stuff a lot. So like spell outs for stuff. So um three sixes instead of it being something super negative is actually just like friends and family forever so it's like a good harken back to a lot of different like subcultures that we're from so that's where the name came from but we actually had a shop fire in our first location last year mm -hmm. so we're on our second location now so we were in downtown now we're out on yellowstone but um curse and a blessing that was a, a very interesting experience i learned a lot about business liability um <laughs> really <experience>, fast yeah. <laughs> yeah so that was uh that was something that we weren't anticipating i don't think anybody anticipates a fire unless they're committing insurance fraud but <laughs> yeah um but yeah so our new space is actually just shy of four thousand square feet and awesome. uh with a grant from the idaho resilience project we we're able to offer subsidized kids art classes very Not subsidizing cool. kids, but the, right, the art class. Yeah, yeah. subsidized. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I follow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so every Tuesday and Thursday we're doing um, kids' classes, and we're actually working really closely with our own like art community, mm -hmm. like, albeit it is small in Pocatello, but um, we're, we're using that as kind of a jumping-up platform for a lot of artists because you learn a lot more when you're teaching. Yeah. So um, implementing using the artists from our community and the mediums that they're comfortable working in and turning it into a, a kid-friendly format. Very cool. So, that's what so we're, yeah. yeah, I mean, because you guys do things over there like the uh, mural fest. Is that what it's called? It's yeah, mural fest? we're trying to figure out a more uh, catchy name, maybe something a little bit more divisive for the area. Mural uh -huh. fest is kind of a catch all, but it, this will be our third year doing it. So we do, um, man, how many did we do last year? Like seven or eight walls around the community. So we just cool. highlight walls that, you know, maybe it's a business owner that we know, some that we don't, but that's kind of from a graffiti painter's standpoint it's strange because like in these communities we have walls that are just not well kept and then we have kids that also want to go out and paint and so it seemed like a very no-brainer like let's just connect the kids with the walls that need painted so again we use that as kind of a we work with regional local and student artists to kind of come together to put those pieces together so instead of just bringing in friends from out of town that could get stale and it doesn't fit the area sometimes but using that as a good catalyst for kids to meet people from outside of the community, as well as people that are excelling in the art scene in the community. That's so, so cool. Yeah. I love it. I know how we how we actually got to meet, we'll share this with our clients, was <laughs> um, Art and Soul came, approached us here at Float Magic and said, hey, we really right. want to do a street mural art division. Right. Would you have some wall space and would you provide that? And I was like, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because we really wanted to be involved in the art community. So right. um, set that up and one day Josh comes walking through my door to ask for permission to <laughs> <laughs> do a certain type of mural yeah. and um and I think he looked up on my shelf and pretty much concluded that we were on the same page right oh and that was the funny part is I think yeah so the, the way on my end, the way it came together was super strange, too, because, like, we had set, like, Google Alerts for Call to Artists, which is, like, a great way to see what's going on, you know, anytime something gets posted with that. Uh -huh. And uh, we were already, like, pretty busy into our season, and we were like, oh, it's a subsidized, or it's not subsidized, it's just, like, a, a pro bono event. And so we were like, we got to go all the way to Twin. <laughs> and so, like, I almost got in our, our ego a little bit about, it. like, well, we got so many other jobs, and then... At the last minute, we're like, you know, what? let's just go. We got a little bit of time. Let's just go. So, yeah, we came and the spray paint was like kind of, I think that was like a different medium that they weren't necessarily expecting. So, right. that's like, yeah, approaching like, is that okay if we do that? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Winnie Christensen from Culture for Change Foundation was actually the one kind of spearheading on yep, our end for everything so yep. and she was here too she was the one that was coordinating with us also. right and so yeah we're doing a project over on red's trading post with um a group of kids too that same like youth factor yeah and so she's doing that but 
yeah, we came over and then I think Mark Daniels and I already had the idea of doing some like Star Warsy type stuff because we were actually sitting around the fire over at his house and I was like, what if Yoda was or Grogu? Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> I know. Jeez. Hang me high. Um, but yeah, what if Grogu was using the force to to roast his marshmallow? And then we kind of expanded on it. I do think like pop culture references are super fun, mm-hmm. but also whenever you can tie in a little bit of like those like community pride points. You know, so like we know that the bridge is like a very like I mean that's a huge landmark for the area. Right. So like, and I do think it is a very impressive piece of you know, it's a big bridge. Yes. It's like not a it's little a bridge. Bridge too, yeah. <laughs> and so it's funny. I actually came the other way into town when we came up, and I hadn't been to the bridge really? until we left. And then I was like, "Whoa, this is actually." <laughs> I'm like, "Where's this bridge at?" I, had it, <laughs> I, didn't, I think we went over a bridge, but you went like, over probably Hanson Bridge. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, "This is yeah, okay." But then we <laughs> they went out there. I was like, "Yeah, that's." It's a lot bigger, but uh, yeah, Art and Soul was a really good catalyst. I think that was a good one because that one is very community heavy. And like mm-hmm. to see how involved in that program the community is up here was crazy. So to take that, we actually did our mural fest the week after Art and Soul. So it was good oh. to see like kind of like the operational like hows because I do think that Melissa Crane does run like a very good camp with that. Mm-hmm. So to see like how that all kind of came together. That definitely gave us a little bit of inspiration to take back to Pocatello. So awesome. And then subsequently, hopefully, we can bring the mural fest format up here too. Yeah, that would I think be that'd super be awesome. fun. So, so yeah, that. well, and when you came to me with the Star Wars theme, we were all about that too. Because right. yeah, we we absolutely love Star Wars around here. We have little Easter eggs all over the place with it, and our Boba yeah. Fett helmet even in our <laughs> lobby. Like, and that's a good. I, I do like Star Wars for the the pop culture reference mm-hmm. of it because, like, being able to, like, it spans so many generations now right. that, like, talking to my mom about how she went to the movies to see the first one and then, like, our whole family went to, like, Phantom Menace <laughs> together. And then, like, with my little brothers and even, like, uh, my sons now, like, the whole Mandalorian, Mandalorian series. series. So, like, yeah. it just keeps connecting. So, yeah. it's I, I do, I think. And it's got good imagery. You could pull from just about anything in that. So, yeah. it works out really nice. But then, yeah, when we saw the Boba Fett helmet, I was like, okay, we got uh, an ally in this. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Probably so, got some clearance to yeah. do these that we I know, we're envisioned. like, I don't know if they're going to go for it, man, you know. <laughs> but uh, let's just do it. And so, we saw it and we're like, okay. So, we yeah. walked in and we're like, Okay. Yeah, That's that right. was awesome. No, and I, I remember waking up at 3 a.m. just to come record you guys painting. <laughs> I don't think about that. Like, almost like, because, yeah, it is, it's funny because, like, we do do murals and permission walls and community events now, but the, uh, the graffiti elements kind of that's an old dog that won't die hard you know yeah. like it's a, it's very tricky because like it's uh you know somebody pulls up a dream like oh <laughs> yeah. no it's just shiny it's okay it's, it's right. just it's just the yeah we're all right i mean that that does happen because yeah we do paint overnight mm-hmm. a lot because like um we do love community engagement but sometimes we're like on a three-day schedule and so we could lose a whole day to that. So it's like kind of selfish, but we do paint at night. So then when someone's like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? We're like, ah, yeah. <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> You're interrupting our flow. <laughs> and that's tricky too. Mm-hmm. With public art, that's one thing that we've talked about a ton is like, you know, you get into those kind of moments where everything's going really good. And like when you're painting a canvas at your house and you have the privacy of your house, like it's a lot more cathartic and involved. But then like, yeah, when you're doing public art, people want to come up and talk and yeah. hang out. And so it's not bad. It's just sometimes, and I'm a talker, so like I'll lose a day and a half to you know, let's talk about it. And well, yeah, like, and oh, I like crap. go out there today and I was like, hey, can we just interrupt and do a podcast today? <laughs> <I know. Okay. laughs> so, yeah, yeah well, yeah. I kind of wanted to let our viewership and clients understand, like, where did you get started in street art? Are you willing to share that? Yeah, I don't know. Hank's got a pretty <laughs> crazy story, too. This guy was actually, um, what, what branch? Army? Yeah, I was in the Army. Yeah. You did graffiti before the Army. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I started doing it in, like, high school. But so after high school, I joined the Army, went to, I was in, like, Louisiana and Colorado. And then I went to Iraq, and I saw contractors making bank, and I was like, I got to do that. <laughs> so I started being a contractor, and then I opened in Kuwait a graffiti BMX and skateboard shop. Oh, wow. In Kuwait. Yeah. That's so cool. So, yeah, that's where it kind of, like started taking off uh-huh but yeah it's and always kind of been there 
And did you do a lot of street art over there then? Yeah. Uh-huh. So what was the reception of, of that in that area? It's different over there because it wasn't like frowned upon like it would be here. Okay. Because it was still so fresh. Yeah. Well, I've been in other foreign countries where graffiti, like they'll, like when I've been in Italy or Croatia, right? Mm-hmm. Graffiti isn't looked at as a bad thing. It's actually like an expression of, and most of it's surrounding like sports yeah. teams and football or soccer, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and they're actually like celebrating different things instead of, instead of it having that negative connotation. Yeah. So, that's so a I, weird thing. That's like kind of like, yeah. when you really do look at it anywhere else, like spots in like the UK, Mm-hmm. Where it's just kind of like a greenlit thing where like people are just doing graffiti and street art. Yeah. But it's, it carries a lot of taboo here, which is super strange. Yeah. Because like, yeah, like melting pot, land of the free. You'd think there would be a lot more like liberties on that. But like it is very, especially spray paint. Like there's a lot of times when like people are like, oh, you do murals? But then the spray paint topic comes up and then all of a sudden it's like, well. And I'm like, it's just an art medium at this point. Right. Like if, if it's not, you know, illegally placed. For then sure. it's just another if it's, medium. If it's permission. You could do graffiti with, you know, acrylic and brush. And so, like, I mean, nobody does. I mean, maybe, with rollers. Maybe a couple, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. People like, still do it with rollers all the time yeah. on yeah. trains and stuff. Yeah. They use rollers mm-hmm. on trains. I always, I always assumed it was spray paint. Well, next time you see a train that's a whole train. Uh-huh. House paint. It's usually house paint really? and rollers. Yeah. But see, and that's, that's what I love about graffiti, though, is, like, it's super creatively diverse. Mm-hmm. And, like, we talk about this a lot where, like, not all artists are creative, but a lot of creatives are artists. Because, like, a lot of people like the art aspect of something, but, like, they can never get out of, like, that creative block. Mm-hmm. And, like, I just have too many ideas. And, like, that overflows into the artistry of it. But, like, graffiti is really cool because there's not a whole, like, there's, you know, subset rules that, like, graffiti writers will follow. You know, kind of like an honor amongst thieves type thing. But other than that, like, how you install something is kind of up to you so like everything from like fire extinguishers old water fire extinguishers we put paint in those yeah house paint and rollers like uh-huh. you know, stencils yeah i mean there's all we, kinds of hundred pasting, ways of doing yeah. it yeah wheat pasting i went through a big wheat pasting phase i really like that basically you make a stencil and then you'd go get like the end rolls from your local newspaper mm-hmm. and then you put your stencil on the the paper and you cut it out and then you go glue it up like wallpaper but oh. you make your own glue like and everything right? yeah on yeah. the wall Yep. Like Mod Podge. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Just exactly. Large scale. Way large scale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Giant awesome. poster scale. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's always good fun. Well, and that's what I find fascinating about like your end product. It starts with a bunch of tagging and, and graffiti outline. Yeah. Doodle we, gridding. That was super funny. Yes. We did that year one for our mural fest down in Pocatello. And like, I can't remember. I think it was on the Elks Lodge down there. And I don't think it was people from the Elks Lodge, but like some concerned citizens called it in there like what the hell happened this? <laughs> and so we had to like you know kind of mold that over and like okay hey guys you know this it, isn't gonna fine. be the end product <laughs> yeah, yeah. and that's what's funny is like um a big mural looks really bad 80 percent of the time and then you get to like the last 20 percent of the install and mm-hmm. then it really comes together once you start adding in detail and stuff but like the big color blocking sections i hate that like when people come up and they're like i don't get it what is it supposed to be? And I'm like, just wait. Just wait. Just Patience. It's gonna, it evolves. It, uh, yeah. You just got to render it out a smidge. But yeah, usually that's like right when it's at its ugliest is like when everybody's like, what is it? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, what is it supposed to be? You're like, come back in two days. And you'll yeah. get to see the masterpiece. So I think, and I do, that's another reason I like doing the night installs and going quick. Cause like, I think that's a fun kind of um, show. Like the next the day it's just done. Yeah, because like a lot of people will like drive down the same road their whole life to go to their job. So like if there's something big that's different, Uh then all of a sudden they're like, what? And that's a good way to get people's attention. It's a little bit more like a shock to the system. I like to do night installs because then like, yeah, they wouldn't notice it. And then, you know, they come to work on Monday and then like, right well and i mean murals just capture when you're in big cities and i know we went to milwaukee and i um we we saw giannis's big like huge like massive mural on the wall right like it's just this huge mural mural of him in his jersey the number in the back and it like it was so cool like it was so simple what it was but it's it's like a celebration of what that city That's, stands for so yeah like when, anything else that you look at is kind of static right but like when you do like a whole wall it mm-hmm. has like this way of like 
it still is a static installation. Like it's not dynamic or immersive at all, but being next to something that big. I yeah. think that's why you have good retention with the kids yeah. is because it feels so much more. It's like almost omniscient that like somebody created that. And then once they can like talk to us about our install process or anything like that, then they start to realize that they can do yeah. it too. So let's talk a little bit about how you're reaching out to kids with art. Let's, right. You have a lot of concepts of pulling them into <laughs> art. And it's, it's tricky, right? Because like kids, I feel like they do want like – Every adult wants to be a kid and every yeah. kid wants to be an adult. <laughs> so yeah. to kind of meet in the middle on that to where like we can still indulge in our like, you know, well, like kid ulting, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah. So what we've been doing is we built this space out, but we haven't been doing big asks for like people to bring. Cause like Southeast Idaho, especially Pocatello is blue collar working class. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we couldn't ever charge for art classes and have good retention because, you know, even fifty dollars to you know lower income household is that would take the kid completely out of play. Yeah. So what we've been doing is kind of like a multi part process where you know that discovery versus disclosure type of a mindset where like if we can do stuff that the kids discover, then it's that same yeah you know, when you found a band and you're like I found them first you know. So we've been having um, regional, local, and uh, national touring bands even come play our art studio because we have a two bay four car garage. So it's not the best, but we also realize that we have the biggest all ages venue in Pocatello right now. Yeah. Which is kind of so cool. Uh, it's cool. It's a bummer that it, like that that's where that, it is, but at least it's it's it, existing in some Yes, and so. and and the way that you're using that space is I mean, it's probably paving the way for other spaces to be yeah. utilized in that same way. But, and I think that's where, you know, and I don't think it's just a Pocatello thing, mm -hmm. but like, you know, a lot of areas in Idaho. It's and, almost a small town thing. It is a small town thing where it's like, you yeah. know, a lot of people are, I guess, kind of socially conditioned to what's around them, yeah. you know? So like if it isn't currently, then surely it must have already have been done and failed. And so anything new kind of has this kind of, uh, it's too progressive for like, okay, have fun with that, that you know. I hope it works, you know, yeah. but like, and yeah, I've seen that time and time again, especially in Pocatello where there was a really good thing 15 years ago. And I think it was just early to market. It was just before it's time. Yeah. Yeah. I had in this concept of our business. Um, I mean, there was one other float center in town and it was, it was probably about 12 to 15 years ago. Right. And there was definitely people who have used our center that used it, but it, it just was a little, time and it was the old style tank process like like oh. you really have to be open-minded to float in one of those right <laughs> because you look <laughs> like you're crawling into a meat locker you know and you're like you're gonna close the door and where am i going and what am i gonna come out as afterwards and so it was it was just one of those um i mean floating's been around forever but when you look like you're on the progressive side it's a huge right. risk to to do something knowing and having the vision that it's going to be great but people have to be open and willing to take part in it in order to make that happen so right. and yeah i do i think that's why and maybe i mean we've had a lot of great conversations yeah. about that and like yeah. probably many many more but i do i think that's kind of like the call to action you know i, I think if more people just kind of shed that like worry. And, and mm -hmm. I think the small town attitude is a lot of people are scared to fail in front of their high school peers. <laughs> I've seen that a lot where it's yeah. like, you know, it is a good idea, but if it doesn't work out, then they're that loser. They didn't make it, you know, type well, of thing. And it's your whole foundation, right. you know, friends, of and, friends your family. and family. Yeah, you don't and, you want know, to be embarrassed. Yeah. Right. Your brother's uncle or your <clears throat> best friend's uncles. Like they all are, they're all there. And that's like your support group. And if you fail in front of them and I, and I think that's a concept that as a community, um, when we can embrace each other's attempts at success, and even if it is a failure, like saying, Hey, Hey, Good job for putting yourself out there and the way not... that we viewed it is just moving the bar incrementally. Yes. You know, like if we can inspire like one kid, like my my friend Cutter had a great story where um we have a macho man, Randy Savage, painted in our uh shop that we did last year or something. But um 
his son attends our skate school. We do skate school for the, the kids every Saturday. Super cool. And so mm -hmm. he was there for the skate school. He said, who's that guy on the wall? He said, oh, you don't know Macho Man Randy Savage? And because of that, like that was something that like Cutter was into as a kid. So he was able to make that connection with his son. Mm -hmm. But then like maybe that connection back to his dad, but he's paying attention to the wall, right? He looked right. at the mural. And so like it did create that, you know, moment spark of so interest yeah. as long as moments like that keep happening then i do think it does incrementally move that bar of tangible yeah for kids or even community members you know if you can just move the bar a little bit Absolutely. then it's a lot easier to to, to get to the it next back one around yeah because yeah, sure. you were saying now his son wrestles and they have like a thing now right yeah like it's a that's, whole that's awesome <laughs> yeah. and who knows started with that little spark of interest yeah. potentially yeah. right and i there. didn't yeah he just told me that story the Super other day cool. and he was like yeah he didn't even pay attention to wwe and then the macho man mural and <laughs> <laughs> now he's all about it you don't so. see that with public art sometimes you know we yeah. leave and then that's all that's all she wrote. So yeah. we don't get to hear all these glorious stories, but sometimes we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it comes back yeah. and it's super awesome. Well, I know that I have been super appreciative of the friendship and relationship we've made because it's opening doors. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's opening doors in lots of ways outside of, I mean, in business and community. And we've made a lot of beautiful connections for yeah. you getting street art and mural oh, art definitely. up. Definitely. Yeah. We were up here. Wow. It was a couple weeks now. Maybe yeah. almost a month, but we've been working with uh, St. Luke's to do yeah. some of the the Hope Live Here, Hope Lives Here murals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we did one over in Canyon View, and um, Kylie over at St. Luke's has been super paramount in kind of yeah. putting stuff together. But she's a powerhouse. So yeah. we're, we're doing a little speaking engagement thing for the yeah the what was it Children Trust Fund of Idaho. Nice. Um, next week, and then in June we're doing another workshop for the Idaho Resilience Project up in Boise. Very so, cool. You know, starting to have those conversations about like a not super serious art therapy conversation, mm -hmm. but you know, spray cans are still, they, they have that taboo. So the kids can feel like they're still being kind of naughty, <laughs> still, but they're learning art concepts. Able, yeah. And no. so I do think it's a good gateway art concept. <laughs> yeah. Process. Oh well, I know when we, cause we have a Idaho Resilience Project, Hope Lives Here mural on the side of our building right. yeah that was one of the first in i think it was the second in the state but one of the first in our area here right. um and and just watching those kids just, they had so much fun just hanging so out so much fun just coming yeah. and and feeling like they could be creative however they wanted to be I they know, had we free liberty blue bubbles and did chalk yep. drawings and stuff but yeah like and i do i think a lot of the kids it, it does break it down for them when they can have that interaction so we always try to make ourselves available for those interactions mm -hmm. especially with kids i mean to everybody but you know once i mean we've met a lot of people that are like i've never met anybody that did graffiti you know <laughs> yeah. and it's like all right let's have the conversation then because it's not like the worst thing right yeah, i mean we were over there at that legal wall this oh, morning yeah and there was a guy with his dog yeah and the guy was just recording some of the wall and he's like w what are you guys doing and we're like oh just gonna doodle a little bit you know and he's mm -hmm. like is this is what you guys do and we're like yeah we're here to paint a mural and he like we gave him a couple cans and the cap and yeah. let him paint like, the wall with us the hobby lobby i'm like just take some he's like recording some it. youtube stuff Videos for himself yeah oh, very cool super cool yeah so it's awesome how it can connect us. Break so. those taboos down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, awesome. I, I feel like I could talk to you guys all day. I know there's tons of stories <laughs> you guys could share. And, but I really appreciate you coming on and just mm -hmm. giving our viewership a glance at, at right. this side of the art world. <laughs> yeah. and, and probably going to see a lot more of your work popping up I around hope this so. summer. Yeah. yeah. I know. We were just talking about, I think... Uh, Twins a little closer on the conversation at Pocatello. So yeah. I'd like to get a couple more murals up here. <laughs> Lots of good walls up here. Lots of good businesses yes. with good walls. Yeah. Well, and if you are a local business and and want to contract <laughs> these guys, yep. absolutely reach out to us. We, yeah. We've we got them on speed dial, so yep, we, can, <laughs> we can give you that information. Yeah, because what, you're working on your, you've done two murals for me, you're doing two more. Yeah. So, yeah. We're excited to see a couple that, things. Yep. I know. Thank through. you for supporting and having us back up. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That's the, the, the conversation we keep having is like, yeah, it's like the PBS thing. Yeah. Viewers like you. <laughs> but like, yeah. I mean, we're not, we're not doing Cabo vacations over murals, but sure. we are 
subsidizing our program more and more. So that's like awesome. every time we do another mural, that's more, you know, funds that we're able to allocate towards those kids programs. So we don't openly advertise that because we want it to, you know, I don't want to guilt trip you into, you know. <laughs> into buying a mural. Mm, yeah, but, but, it, but it's but no. really a feel good process to know that what you're paying for is going to supplement more opportunities right. in teaching youth how to creatively and um, in a healthily, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a focus their attentions and, right. their, and their creative aspirations. So, yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Keep doing it. Yep. <laughs> a little while. <laughs> so just remember, viewers, you can tap into our podcast on Apple, Spotify, YouTube. You can find us on Facebook and social medias. Um, and we'll be dropping our podcasts about once every two weeks. So be sure to tune in, tune in and share it with all your friends and you'll get to meet cool yeah. guys like this. I'll share, I'll share my friend base yeah. <laughs> with everybody. So thanks for tuning in and remember it's perfectly okay to stay salty. <laughs>